Hello everyone, welcome to Middle Fantasy. Now, when it comes to me picking books, it is a very, very, very rare thing to me to pick up a book without knowing literally anything about it. Like, what I mean by that is not looking up a summary, not looking up a review, just picking up a book from my shelf and just, just straight reading it. And that's kind of what happened with Kings of the Wild. And you know what? This is a book that, like, the stars just aligned. It was, like, the perfect storm for me because I literally knew nothing about it. I pretty much had zero expectations. And this book might be my favorite book of the entire year. And why don't we get into it? Because it is a book that, for me, I read it a couple days ago, and I've been, like, thinking about it, and I just can't get it out of my head. So why don't we get into the review and see where it's good about it, let's see what's bad about it, but let's go on this journey together, everyone. So Kings of the Wild is written by Nicholas Eames, and it's actually his debut novel, and it is such a strong debut novel compared to other authors that I've read. Like This is like, it hits the ground running, but at the same time, it's very honest in what it's trying to do. Now, if I wanted to give like the summary of this book, Quit essentially what it is, is just imagine like this legendary band of mercenaries that pretty much, you know, killed dragons, slayed mermaids, um, you know, killed gorgons and everything around the gambit from like goblins to everything. And after a while of them getting a little older, maybe even a couple of them having kids, they decided we're going to disband. And this pretty much takes place 20 years after them being disbanded. And they've all gotten horribly old. They've all gotten horribly schlubby. And they're all screw ups. But we follow the main character of Clay Cooper, who out of all of them is like the pretty much like middle class dude. He has his job. He has a daughter. He has a wife. And pretty much what happens is like their front man, who is like the leader of their band, like needs help on pretty much like a suicide mission because his daughter was trying to follow into his footsteps and she got caught in a bad situation, which pretty much is like you, the only way to actually solve the problem is to get the old band back together and do a near suicide mission to save her from a terrible siege with thousands upon thousands of monsters. Now on the surface, that sounds like such a run of the mill type of story. It's like, okay, this is pretty much like a road trip story or like get the band back together. But for people that have read this before, and they're looking for ways to like explain it to people on how to like get them to read it. Or maybe you're looking for a good hook. Basically, the story is just imagine like a bunch of friends that played D&D in like the 80s and they all got like level 20 characters and they decided, you know what, after a while we, you know, we're, we're getting girlfriends, we're leaving to like college and stuff. And after 20 years, they all decide to come back together and play one more game with all their 20 level characters. And they're all a bunch of like schlubs and screw ups. And they do still decide to use their characters and just wackiness ensues. Now, the other way that I thought of the story is if the person that you're trying to get to read this book or you're trying to read this book and you like like heavy metal music, just imagine like a hardcore heavy metal band. You know, they disbanded, like they had their breakup, but then 20 years later they decide we're going to play at the state fair and we're going to kick butt. But none of them have changed, but all of them are pretty much have just gotten older, but yet they still think that they're in their 20s. That's pretty much the story. Now, I love how the story is actually written out. It's kind of like... One part, you would think of it almost like the journey beats the destination, like the road trip, but that's not really the story. The core theme of this, if you're trying to read this, is think of it more as a story about generations, because when you read the story, it's more about fatherhood and pretty much like, you know, you're getting older and these new people are coming in to prove themselves. What do you do in that situation? And I found that to be one of the strong, engaging things about it, because I was like feeling for these characters even though a bunch of them are terrible, awful people, you just, like, you find sympathy with them because you see, like, yeah, they have it pretty bad, and you have, like, that sympathizing nature to them. And one of the things that's so outstanding about this book, if you want to read this, if you like books about character, every one of the characters you follow within the band saga, which is the, you know, this legendary band, they're all so distinct. Like, you have, you know, the wizard, Moog, you have, like, Gabriel, who's, like, the front man, you have Clay Cooper, who's almost like the paladin, or he's just like the overall just fighter. You have Gamelon, who's pretty much the bloodthirsty killer, and so on and so forth. And when I was watching this and I was reading this book, I was like thinking about like, why do we like fantasy? Why do we like Dungeons and Dragons? And this pretty much boils it into this one book. Kings of the Wild 
is what people like to capture, like the weird wackiness and the weird nature of it. Because it's just like a Dungeons and Dragons game that's gone off the rails because there's so many tropes within it, within the narrative of the story that's all Dungeons and Dragons based with like owl bears, just giant slime, just weird encounters. And if you like the type of stuff, this book is for you. I was actually getting a lot of flashbacks of the book Critical Failure by Robert Bevan, if you have read that. It's kind of a little similar to that, especially when it comes to like, this book is supposed to be not serious. Don't take this book seriously. It is almost a comedy, but at the same time, it like has so much heart to it. Like, I just want to like rip my heart out like a Mortal Kombat fatality that when you read it, you'll understand that it's trying to be like, a very honest depiction of like what fatherhood really means and what it means to get older. It's, again, there's like this generational thing as well. It's like this age thing that I found to be so good in this book. Now, I do have one criticism for this book, and that is if you're looking for a book that has a very strong world building and magic system, you're not going to get it here. This is the type of book, again, it plays by Dungeons and Dragons rules. Magic is supposed to do cool things. It doesn't really have to have like rules and stuff. It's very soft magic in a way of just magic can do what magic needs to do for the story. Though, the best way to put it, if you're looking for that type of story, just imagine, like, if I go back to the scenario of a bunch of friends playing, just imagine that the DM was, like, getting really excited and, like, quintessentially, he's like, okay, I made this cool campaign we haven't played for, like, 20 years, and, like, his ex-wife, who was cleaning out, like, their part before, like, they finally get divorced, throws away the paper, so the DM is, like, winging it a little bit, like, he's just freestyling. That's almost what it feels like when it comes to this narrative it's like the journey beats the destination but the journey's like detoured in a way it feels like a Dungeons and dragons like campaign like they're walking through the woods and then a bandit showed up and then snakes appeared that from sticks like weird things like that and if you're looking for stories that are just like you just have to go along for the ride you'll enjoy this for me i like that but at the same time when you're trying to get to point a to point b like okay we have to go to this place but they keep detouring in weird places is was like oh god this is this is bad. And also when it comes to it, there's like weird time skips that happen. That's like, okay, how many weeks passed by? Wait, what's going on? Huh? Again, like it feels like a D and D campaign where the DM is just freestyling it. Maybe that's like the point a little bit, but if you can't get past that a little bit, you might have a hard time reading the story. If you're like, okay, they've set up by a lot of things and every time like, okay, this is what they're going to do for this. No, that's not what's going to do. Okay. They're going to do this. No, that's not how it's going to do. And they kind of got a little annoying, but at the end of the day, maybe that's kind of the charm of the book a little bit, is that you have almost that Dungeons and Dragons feel in a narrative where you have a bunch of people that are doing some of the most outrageous shit that I've ever seen in a book. Like, there's like one cop out that I loved more. Like, I was like disappointed. It's like they hype up like this mythical creature and then they meet it and like, oh, we're going to have this big old battle scene and then they kill it off screen. You're like, what? No, that's dumb. Like, I want to see them fight this thing. But then, like, that's the joke. Like, if you don't like that type of stuff, you might not like this book a little bit. Now, this is a very lighthearted adventure story. It's almost as if, like, Joe Ambercrombie for two seconds got bitten by the corpse of Terry Pratchett. And during a full moon, he would turn into Terry Pratchett almost. And, like, that's almost the book that we get with, like, Kings of the Wild. You get, like, a Ware Pratchett almost where it's, you know, it's very comedic. It can be very serious at times. And that's what I like about it. I mean, it has so many great jokes and comebacks. Like, I think the strongest thing that the author does is the conversations. Like, the most interesting stuff that happens is just people talking in a room instead of, like, the sword and sorcery and, like, people, like, hitting the things with, like, swords. That isn't the narrative of the story. The story is, like, this relationship between these bands of people. And the only other person that I've ever laughed so hard reading a book is actually Scott Lynch when he does his comebacks and his witty observations in The Gentleman Bastards. Like, if you're looking for some of the funniest comebacks or, like, people's responses, this is the type of story for you because there are moments where I put down the book and laughed. And if you're, like, a person that likes reading into, like, deeper things, there are so many little references. Like, there was legitimately, like, legit, like, the cake is a lie, like, portal reference that made me stop and be like, wow, that's the year of our Lord, 2020. That was, like, a 2007 reference. But... Like, it was put in a way, it's like, made me stop and, like, appreciate that for a little bit. And that's what made the story so strong. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm going off of, like, the music analogy a little bit. If every person in this band, like, of Saga is actually based off a musician. Like, Gabe strangely reminded me a lot of, like, 
early Ozzy Osbourne, or maybe even like Clay Cooper being like David Brocky from Guar a little bit when it comes to their personalities. Like even when it comes to like their wizard Moog, he reminded me a lot of like probably Freddie Mercury in many ways. Like there's a lot of things when it comes to the story. Like if you notice little things, you'll appreciate it more. And at the end of the day, this is the book that's actually now a series. And I plan on reading more of them and talking about them more in the future. And that's kind of the thing about it. That's the charm of it is it, it ended in a way that felt so satisfying that I don't need to continue. But at the same time, I want to be more into this world and explore, even though it's like you're not really thrown into this world and like you want to like live in it. You're just like, this is so cool and so neat and so different from the fantasy that I'm reading right now that is totally worth the read. Check it out. That's pretty much my review for it. Well, thank you all so much for watching this amazing video. And like always, everyone, may your food and drink ever be tasteful and may your books be filled with fantasy and adventure. Now, if you need me, I'm going to go like form a band and kick some butt in the wilds because this is going to be amazing. Yeah. Bye, everyone. See ya.